Hey there, everybody. Welcome to our review of This Is Us Season 6, Episode 10, titled Every Version of You, the Randall episode. And I think it is important to come right out of the gate and say, I am a huge Randall fan, so I am probably <laughs> just like a little bit biased coming into this review. Nobody is shocked, Matt. If you guys have been here for a while <laughs> with us, you know how much Randall means to Matt. I... It both I mean this in both in good and bad ways, and I'll explain this as this video goes along. I, I relate probably more to Randall than almost any character on television, so his story I knew was going to be emotional and interesting, and also he was going to have his fair share of flaws because Randall has that, and I don't think this is the most eventful of the Big Three trilogy, but to me it's one of the most satisfying. Absolutely. it The pacing of this for me was like, Perfect. Yeah. It really needed to be this because Randall has been a certain way for such a long time yeah. that if it wasn't paced the way that it was, it just wouldn't have been as satisfying and as believable as it was to get him to where he's going to be. Well, before we go further here, of course, hit that subscribe button because we are going to have reviews, previews, all sorts of great stuff coming, especially as we brace for the next episode, which appears to be, insert dramatic music here, the smoker incident. Oh boy. Also, follow us over on Instagram, Matt and Jess TV. Okay, okay, so let's just talk about that very quickly. At the end of this episode, we got sort of two little snippets, and they yes. were pretty small, but I think very significant, obviously, for the Toby and Kate Toby had revealed that the smoker has gotten there in time for this and this. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> oh, let me know how you really feel. Dread. Sad, dread. It is there in time for the anniversary party for Rebecca and Miguel. But it also came with a side of Kate telling Toby, I'm not ready to move here and I'm going back. So that pretty much kind of ends things for them because unless Toby was just you know putting out a bluff about move here or else and she's like okay I'll call that bluff or else it's kind of like okay is the smoker incident really the thing that's breaking them up or is it this moment right here where he was like do this or else okay or else I I'm sure we'll talk more about this next week, but it is one of these sort of things where how miserable does this anniversary party have to be if it's coming with a side of divorce? Because it's like, that's kind of not the point of celebrating an anniversary, but it's also something that has been set up for a very long time and is unavoidable. We also saw Kevin go yeah. back to Madison's house with the twins and sort of have this talk where he was like, ah, everything went really well. I'm, you know, I'm really happy with my time and, you know, everything is good here kind of thing. She's like, yeah, yeah, everything's good here. There was just this one longing moment yeah. that was left on Kevin as he was watching her, not the twins, her. So I'm just putting that out there that I saw it and I don't know if anyone else really noticed but they left that camera on him watching her for a little long and I feel like it's meaningful. I noticed. I, I also okay. I, I noticed because I well number one we're both in the rooting for Kevin and Madison camp and I was just like hoping for any little nugget and I think that shows that okay he really does care a lot about what she thinks about him. Mm -hmm as a parent, what he is doing, his commitment to be the best father that he can be. And I mean, I don't think this is necessarily going to lead to them being directly, you know, running down the altar, but I think it's a step in a good direction. All right, let's talk about the father of the year, Randall. Oh, Ooh, that fight, man. Wow. And it's, it's so heartbreaking, the yeah. things that Deja said to him. However, I feel like all of us as teenagers or people that have teenagers understand that that is kind of comes with the territory of being a teenager. Yeah. You say things that you really regret to your parents. You cross the line with your parents. Yeah. You're still learning. You're in that kind of stage of not quite a kid, not yet an adult, still learning how to deal with these big emotions that happen. And with Deja, this situation is really bad. Yeah. Randall 100% crossed the line telling Malik yes. to break up with her. And I'm not talking about anything else. I'm not talking about her wanting to move there, move in with him. None of that. He shouldn't have done that. 
Now, could it have been a situation where maybe Malik and Deja could have done something else? Yes, they didn't have to break up for her to be able to find herself, go to college, go to work, like all these other things. They didn't have to also live together. There, There is a middle ground here that was kind of like, where is this? And I think that the... The issue that Randall has, I think by and large, is he has this inability to let go of really just about anything. And he was totally in the wrong, like you said, for going and doing this with Malik in the first place. And it doesn't matter what his intentions were. And I, and I think this is where it's, it's so weird to say, but one of the reasons I think I really love Randall is because he's also a prick. And what I mean is that he he has moments where he just does things that are not nice and not good but i think he did his heart is often in the right place but we all know people who are like this and who are fully fledged and flawed and sort of come back around and learn from some of their th issues and you know deja is young deja is going to have to learn from her own issues and she's going to have to learn some of this on her own and not because randall tells her or tells malik it has to be this way yeah, and that's sort of where a bit of the not payoff came in this episode for me. Because most of this episode had payoff after payoff after payoff for me. <laughs> but when we got to this situation where after Deja told off Randall and was like, yeah. he broke up with me. She leaves in the middle of the night to go to Boston to talk to him. And we get this conversation with Randall and Malik at the end where Malik is like, yeah, uh, I didn't do this for you. I did this because I think it's the right thing for Deja as well. But that idea never would have come to him if it wasn't planted by Randall. This is still Randall's doing and his influence to break them up instead of the, the payoff I think I was really hoping for was that they would come back together but slow it down that maybe what randall is saying where he's taking it this extreme you yeah. guys have to break up you can't even be together anymore i don't care if you're in love it's too much <laughs> that maybe the two of them would sit down and be like okay you know what why don't we dial it back instead of moving in together and taking it to a 10 let's dial it back to like a, a three or a four where we'll still be together and we still love each other but we're not going to move this fast. We will just take it nice and slow. I don't think they needed to break up. Like, it's a bit much. I think how I feel about this in the end will probably depend a lot on what we see in the flash forwards. Like, I would love to see that they are still together. I think a they're to... totally going to be together. Okay, all right. They left a little Easter egg there. All right, give, give us the Easter egg. Okay, so they did have this moment where they were kind of talking still and about this sort of like, oh, you know, the door might be open to the future. Things circle around. And then who is also there? Rebecca and Miguel. And that was <laughs> their story, right? Yeah. Like they, they got forced apart by, you know, Kind of Kevin, really. Yeah. And then they circled back around when the timing was right. I hope, in everything in me, I hope that that is the case for them. Because, yes, it was a little bit sort of sudden. Okay, the rubber band has now snapped, and now we're going our separate ways. Like, I feel like I feel like Malik knew that Randall influenced it. At least that's how I want to believe it. I think he just he didn't want to give Randall the credit. Maybe it was out of just frustration out of what he did, or sometimes... People don't like it when other people cause them to realize things about themselves. And then they're sort of like, well, how dare you point out this thing that maybe I could have figured out for myself later? Why are you getting so involved? And I, I don't know if maybe that was a part of it as well. I think really we just needed more Malik in this episode. He was only in like two minutes at the very end. Yeah, I just... I feel like it's just from one extreme to another with these two being influenced by randall it just it didn't need to go here's two young people who are in love that are still kind of you know they've they've been together a long time but they're still kind of at the starting line of life like you can still be together and do that randall and beth were yeah. able to do that they were in college they were dating it's okay like it seems like the big sort of sticking point is that 
Malik is a father, but Malik has been a father this entire time. Like yeah. nothing has changed. This is some brand new information that's come out of there. And if you didn't want Deja to be part of that, then it should have been nipped in the bud at the beginning. You don't let them date, let them fall in love, yeah. let them, you know, spend the night together, which he didn't let them happen, but it's happened now. And then just take it all away over something that was already there the whole time. Like just, they can still, I don't know. It, I just wasn't into this ending. I was just kind of like, eh. That, that just for me, it was just because of the lack of presence of Malik for a lot of it. I mean, I do think that could have been stronger and especially because I think everything leading up to it was so unbelievably good. <sighs> so good. Like one of the, one of the things that I, you know, that I love to do when I'm writing is I love to tell sort of these stories where you have a lot that happens in a really short period of time and it's sort of like okay how do you progress from this hour <laughs> to this hour to this hour and make sure that there's enough that happens that make these individual scenes matter but at the same time still make it feel normal and I, I feel like that's what this show did that was so just awesome with Rebecca and Randall Having, you know, having lunch at the diner and eating the sandwich and then going over to the bar and then the hotel, the selfies, the teeth brushing. It's like all these little moments were just so unbelievably well done and well written. Yeah, it was just Rebecca giving her son a reminder that he needs to take care of himself and his own needs as well. Yeah. Hey, you need to eat. Let's all sit down. Let's have a sandwich. Hey, let's go to the bar and just have a minute and have a drink together. Hey, why don't we play some darts together and just unwind a little bit together? Like it's it, even with the two of them sitting in their beds reading, let's, yeah. let's have a moment. Let's just read. It's Everything that Rebecca suggested was like self-care <laughs> for Randall that he doesn't give to himself. Yeah. And that conversation, you know, we saw him give this little snip at her at the beginning yeah. to kind of be like, well, I'm not in charge of, you know, your health anyway, so it doesn't matter kind of thing. And she later comes around to talk to him about why that is. And a lot of it is from this trip as well, just yeah. showing him to be like, listen, when your father died, you were here and you held up the family in a lot of ways. And I leaned on you way more than I should have. You didn't choose certain colleges so that you could be closer. You made decisions based on what's best for the family not what's best for you and that time is done i'm not going into this sickness continuing to do this to you i think rebecca knows randall better than randall knows randall in a lot of ways and i think randall gets so caught up in his head and gets so caught up with this idea of being the hero of being the caretaker of being like this thing for everybody and i think because randall and jack were kind of similar in that sort of way i think rebecca sees so much of jack and randall that she's able to detect all of this stuff like she's got a really good like randall radar for when he's starting to just like spiral and go in all these different directions this is one of my hotter takes of the episode is that i feel like randall was also trying to do what was best for deja in the sense that rebecca was trying to do what was best for randall the difference is rebecca was just so much unbelievably better at it yeah, well she's had many more years of experience at that time but it's it was such an important episode for randall because yeah. we we saw with Kevin and Kate, they both just grabbed life and was like, you know what? I'm going to listen to my mom. I'm going to grab life. Yeah. I'm going to grab the twins, go to the cabin, and it's going to be me and them. I'm going to grab life. I'm going to go out to yeah. San Francisco, see what's there. No, Toby, I want my happiness too. So it was, we knew that Randall wasn't going to quite be like that. Yeah. He's not going to just, a light's not going to just switch like that. He needed the person who is truly one of his very best friends his mom is not just his mom yeah his mom fills a lot of different roles for him just like you know he does for her the my absolute favorite line in this episode and i i, I did not expect this to hit me as hard as it did but it's that moment where randall says to rebecca you know, this would sound obnoxious if I was saying it to anybody other than you, but I know that if I run for this, I'm going to win. And it was just like such a 
I would say it's a moment of just like irrational confidence, but you know, as set up here, I, I relate to Randall in a lot of ways. And it's like, I'm not a very confident person, like 95% of the time in my life, but every now and then I have like that one little thing that I sort of feel that way about. And I will just speak that like tiny bit of ambition into a very specific spot and then feel really, really good about it. It was just like Randall. I love that you believe in this, and I also love so much that you understand that if you said this to too many people, you would either be jinxing it or you would look obnoxious. And I believe in you too, Randall. You can do this. No, I. it was such an important moment because it was also a bit of his own sort of actually saying what he wants for himself. Yes. Because in that moment, he was still also being like, you know, oh, I have an opportunity to to do this. The senator's been calling me. They want to fill the seat. You know, I'm kind of the underdog, but I know I can win this. And I know I can go all the way to the top and I can win that too. But he's also like, but Beth just started this really important job. You yeah. know, Deja's just about to, you know, go into her next phase in life. You're sick, mom. Like there's all these other family things that are holding me back from it. That's why I think that moment is just, it's so important for him to just be like, this is actually what I want and I'd be good at it and I know I can win it and that's it. It makes me all the more excited now about the idea that we do have maybe Senator Randall in those flash forwards to Rebecca's <laughs> deathbed. I mean, we've been saying that for a while that he might be in some sort of elevated political position. I... I know Randall said that he could go all the way. I still do not believe that that is President Randall Pearson at Rebecca's deathbed because I didn't see any Secret Service agents or anything around at that point. And they just may not have shown them because they don't want to reveal that yet. He could not, maybe not be there yet, but maybe is on his way or is running a campaign or is close to it. I think that... I didn't think he was going to become President Randall, but I actually think he is going to now. Like we saw even in the flashbacks, him sort of talking about yeah. that idea when he was talking to that cop or who's kind of like, hey, I could be the president one day kind of thing. <laughs> and then we're here, right? Like in the present where he's getting circled to be a senator and he has now said out loud, he thinks he can go all the way and he really believes in himself if he could just get behind himself to stop having to take care of everybody. And that's why I think Rebecca never gets her flowers. She really doesn't. No. And this is one of those truly selfless acts that Randall thinks is, you know, there to hurt him at first. Like, why wouldn't I be the, the caregiver? Yeah. When really it's a, I am giving you care. I am giving you self-care. Please look after what you would like in life. This is why Rebecca is really, you know, the heroine of this story. Like, everything she does is for the sake of other people. And her big defining whole speech this season is, I want you guys to all go and live your lives and live them boldly. Not, a hey, please take care of me, because she knows they will take care of her. But she doesn't just want that for them. And I, I've gone on a really weird journey with this idea of, Randall being president because at first I was sort of like okay you know this is going to be too hokey Kevin's going to be a big movie star Randall's also going to be president it's like these big three characters and we still don't know what's going to happen with Kate but let's just say she becomes like a Grammy winning artist or something and it's like okay this is all too much but the more I sort of think about it why not like, why not have them all be super successful? And why not have them all follow their dreams? And, like, what's so wrong with that in an era of history where we're all so sad and upset all the time? Yeah, and usually when you have one or two big influential people in a family, other families kind of end up picking up on that as well. I mean, Kate's extremely talented. Is she going to go and, you know, win awards for her music? Maybe, maybe not. Yeah. But we know that her son is going to be in that spot, singing to like sold out huge shows. And we do know Kevin has that Oscar on his shelf in the future, but we also know that he's doing construction stuff too. So who knows? It may just be like, a, okay, I've done that, but I'm more dedicated to this. President Randall, like why not? He does 
I, it feels like if Randall ever just stopped putting everyone else in front of himself, he could reach there. This is the thing I'm the most upset about <laughs> after this episode. There's not that many left. No. I wanted to watch a President Randall spinoff. And now I, I know they've said, I, I know we've talked about other spinoff ideas now, but I am all in now on Randall on the campaign trail, Randall you know, doing the whole routine. Rand I, and I'm not going to get this, I don't think, because I think Sterling's already working on other stuff. <laughs> I'm okay not seeing that. I'm, I'm not sad. I'm not really into like mob stuff or <laughs> super political stuff. I'm more into stuff like this that's just, you know, about really relatable, you know, situations and families and just kind of I don't know, stuff that just I'm just not into politics. <laughs> I wanted to see Randall do like the stupid political stuff where they like, you know, the politician goes to the <laughs> county fair and they have to take part in like the pie eating contest to like win over the folksy voters. It's like, why can't we have folksy voter Randall in these final episodes? Listen, it's not over yet. <laughs> we may get like a little glimpse of that in the wrap up at the end. I mean, who knows what that's going to end up looking like. We could just get little pops of like, here's how their whole lives all ended up looking like. A little bit like another series that I was about to reference, but I'm not going to ruin it for anyone. <laughs> now that it's like been over for like 15, yeah. 20 years, but you know, just in case you haven't seen it. But I think this, we're coming out of this big three trilogy. And I think ultimately it's, really really satisfying i i think all these episodes have given us different things to talk about we haven't necessarily like agreed with every single thing that these characters did like i'm still a little bit sour about the toby stuff that they made him as unlikable as they did yeah and i'm pretty worried going into this smoker episode that they're going to do something that's going to make him un more unlikable. Like, we know that Jack Damon's going to, he has this scar, something yeah. happens with the smoker. That's the day he feels that that was the end of his family, which makes sense because he was there for that and he yeah. wasn't here for everything else. But we've seen Toby on the phone all the time not paying attention to Kate, not paying attention to the family, not paying attention to anything yeah. that's going on. It feels like they're probably going to just keep ramping that up. He's not going to come there and all of a sudden not be on the phone. Is he holding Jack, taking a call, not paying attention? Now the kid is hurt. Like, it could be the final straw. But it's also like, it doesn't need to just pile on only Toby. Like, yeah. why can't it just be two people, you know, just falling apart? I would really rather have that, especially because it's like, I feel like this episode tonight with Randall was mostly uplifting and yes, I don't want, I don't want too much more sadness. Is that, is that wrong to not want too much more sadness? Buckle up because we're going to be getting there next week. All right. Well, hit that subscribe button, you know, hang out with us as we do prepare ourselves emotionally for whatever is going to be happening next. We will have a preview of course, for that episode before too long. Follow us on Instagram at Adam Just TV, and we will see you here next time.